Coral reefs are often described as the rainforests of the sea. They house an incredible diversity of life, something we try to recreate in our reef tanks. Another common hobby I think that a lot of us are involved in is the keeping of poison dart frogs. They're small, incredibly colorful, not too hard to keep and breed. And their tanks, like our reef tanks, can be incredibly beautiful living works of art, packed to the brim, just with all manners of mosses, orchids, and pretty much every variety of plant that you can imagine. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and for today only, Uncle Ribbit, as my nephew calls me. Now, think about frogs, and particularly think about their life cycles. You know, it's an egg to a tadpole, and then you have a frog, right? Seems simple enough. Now, most amphibians need water in order to reproduce, and poison frogs in the rainforest are no exception. But now, let's think about that. Yeah, rainforests are wet, but they're not called dry forests. But, you know, these frogs live in trees and on the small shrubby plants of the understory. They don't live on the shores of lakes and rivers and ponds like we might think of a frog. So how do they find the water that they'll need to reproduce? You know, not just any pool will work. It has to be one that's going to stick around for a couple months, long enough for their tadpoles to turn into small frogs. I found a really interesting paper all about this question titled, Tadpole transporting frogs use stagnant water odor to find pools in the rainforest. There is a link down in the description below if you'd like to check it out. It's open access, so I'd encourage you to give it a look. So a moment ago, I mentioned that these frogs live in the small trees, heliconia, and other plants like that in the understory. Now that presents a problem though, because they also lay their eggs in the protected nooks and crannies on and around the same plants. In order to do this successfully, the frogs need to then transport their newly hatched tadpoles to a pool of water. To do this, they back down into the newly hatched tadpoles, and then the tadpoles wriggle up onto their parents' backs, sometimes with the help of the parent frog. From there, it's just a matter of where to deposit the tadpoles. Not just any pool of water will work. Some tadpoles are cannibalistic and will eat other tadpoles. Other pools of water might contain predatory fish. Still others might not last the couple months their tadpole will need. So how do parent frogs find the one that fits the bill? It turns out, poison frogs are great at detecting scents. The species with cannibalistic tadpoles can detect the scent of another tadpole already in the water. They seem to be able to sniff out the scent of decaying leaves, an indication that the water is stagnant and therefore unlikely to be drying up. Now, decaying leaves are everywhere in the rainforest, and we're not exactly sure the compound that the frogs are smelling, but it's clear that they can detect leaves decaying in water. This great sense of smell, combined with a great spatial memory, allows these tiny frogs, and many of them are only the size of your thumbnail, to have comparatively huge ranges, up to a hundred, a few hundred meters. This is even more impressive when you consider that some poison frogs feed their tadpoles unfertilized eggs and therefore must remember where all of their tadpoles are so that they can go and feed them regularly. You might be wondering, how do we know all this? Well, the team from the paper took several plastic dishes into the rainforests of French Guiana. They filled them all with well water, but surrounded some with leaves that they had left in water for a few weeks. Control dishes got no decaying leaves around them. And then they had trial dishes with tadpoles, but no decaying leaves. And dishes without tadpoles, but with decaying leaves surrounding them. The theory was that perhaps the frogs are just seeing other tadpoles in the water and depositing their tadpoles alongside. That wasn't the case though. In the experiment of 253 tadpoles that were deposited, 212 were in the water surrounded by decaying leaves. 23 of them were deposited into water that already had tadpoles, and only 18 in the control water that did not have any decaying leaves nearby or tadpoles in the water. There's still a lot left to learn though. What exactly is attracting the frogs? Now, as I mentioned, it can't just be decaying leaves because they're everywhere in the rainforest. It's gotta be something about the leaves decaying in the stagnant water. I hope you don't mind this brief trip into another hobby. We'll be back to reef tanks next time. Till then, stay safe, be kind to each other, and have a fantastic day.
拜。